Howdy, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for banning my mother-in-law from entering my home for what she said to me after walking in on me with someone else? Alright folks, just to let you know, there is a content warning on this one. This one does deal with the death of a spouse. To add some context, my wife Nat, 29-year-old female, passed away 10 months ago. While her and I, a 29-year-old male, were separated, we never got to divorce due to what happened. We have a 3-year-old daughter who is now with me full-time. She's been going to preschool already, so for the most part, I have the home to myself. My mother-in-law never told me that she was coming over. She usually does to see my daughter or take her out. Also, she hasn't used the key to my place in a long time, so I completely forgot that she even had it. The other morning, I had a friend over, and she shows up unexpectedly because she thought that would be their day to go to the park. Instead of, you know, closing the door after walking in on me, she starts ridiculing me. It was extremely awkward for my friend, or well, both of us. She is still extremely mad at me. After my friend left, she tried to say more about me being an irresponsible father. She then brought up how Nat hasn't even been gone for a whole year yet and I'm already sleeping with other women. As if we hadn't already been separated for four months before she passed. Her calling me disgusting was the last straw and I told her to get out. We spoke again later but it seems she told a few people in Nat's family because her sisters were on my back about it too. I was so mad about her telling everyone my personal business so I said she's not allowed to set foot in my house again. She can call or text on the days that she's here to see my daughter, but she won't be allowed in. My mother-in-law didn't say anything about it until yesterday when she realized they changed all the locks. Now I'm being called the jerk for overreacting, since they think that she has the right to be upset about me being with another woman so soon after Nat passed away, and she shouldn't be punished for that. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. So, OP, you have a lot of points here. I don't think that you're the jerk in this situation, and I think that your mother-in-law is acting unreasonable, but your mother-in-law is also hurt. This isn't to excuse her behavior, this isn't to say that she is in any way, shape, or form correct, but your mother-in-law probably does need to go into extended therapy if she hasn't already been in therapy, because this isn't a healthy way to take out her anger about Nat passing. It sounds like she's still very much hung up on this, and that's understandable. I mean, you know, losing a loved one is always hard, and it's always difficult to deal with those kinds of things. So I can certainly understand your point of view here because you need to move on. You were already in a rocky place with your relationship, and I'm sure it hurt you, but it's not the same as it would have been if she was someone who was actively in your life. So I don't think that you're the jerk in the situation, but I would be curious about what you folks have to say. So anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, you don't have to justify anything as a widower to anyone. And legally, you have the right to prevent anyone from seeing your child that you choose to. They have visits out of the kindness of your heart. It might be necessary to remind these folks that it's none of their business. And as others have mentioned in other Am I the Jerk posts, let the school know whether the mother-in-law is authorized to pick your daughter up from preschool. I'm certainly no expert, but as for your last point, I'm pretty sure this would be a textbook case for mother-in-law to sue for grandparent rights. So I would be hesitant to say that OP has the right to prevent anyone from seeing their child. And that's an interesting case. I mean, I think that there are probably cases from place to place and jurisdiction to jurisdiction where that might not be fully you know the case so no legal advice here not on brian's advice <laughs> also seems important to point out the crucial distinction that you weren't with another woman that would imply that your wife was still alive and you were cheating op you were just with a woman which you are free to do and people get to grieve in their own time even if you hadn't been separated before your wife's passing the only person who gets to decide when you are ready to move on is you op can your former mother-in-law voice her concerns if she feels that something that you're doing isn't good for your daughter? Sure, but that's all she gets. She can voice her concern, and you can consider her concern or not as you see fit. She does not get to have any input how you are living your life now. Our next letter is titled, Am I the jerk for getting angry at my pregnant wife after she said that I wasted years of my life raising my little sister? As just as a content warning on this one, 
This involves a negligent parent and also the death of a parent and pregnancy. When I was 15 years old, I'm a male, and my sister was two years old, my mom passed away. After her passing, my dad changed. He became emotionally unavailable and barely showed any concern about my sister's upbringing. He was financially available as he would give me money at the end of each month and then just disappear. As a result, I took the parental role over for my sister. I am the one who had to do everything a parent should do from cooking, advice, homework, emotional support, etc. I basically raised her. When she was 10, she asked if she could call me dad, and it was the proudest moment of my life. I also consider her my daughter. Now she's 22 years old, studying for her master's degree, and I'm very proud of her. I also got married, and my wife recently got pregnant. We were talking one night, and she said, I am very excited because you will finally get the child that you wanted. I did not like this comment, but I gave her the benefit of the doubt, as I had to take responsibility for my sister at a young age. I can see where she's coming from. She then continues, I always felt sorry for you because you were stuck in that situation and was forced to waste years of your life raising a child that was not your responsibility instead of experiencing a life as a young adult like normal, doing normal things, but now you can experience the genuine thing. I was raging inside and I told her, what do you mean I wasted all these years? I never once thought of those years like that. I'm very proud that I was able to raise my daughter alone despite what had happened with our parents into a healthy functioning adult. Experiencing the genuine thing, she's my daughter. It is as genuine as it can get. Just because you did not give birth does not mean our father-daughter bond is not genuine. She was shocked by how angry, and she said that she was just trying to comfort me. I said, comfort me? Is this a joke? You clearly have no clue about how I feel. This just happened last week, and we still have not recovered from this conversation. So, am I the jerk? Alright folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. So, OP, I think that your wife was probably in the wrong here, but I also don't necessarily know if her motivations were to be malicious in her, uh, the way she said this. I mean, it wouldn't make sense for your wife to want to maliciously attack your relationship with your daughter, but that doesn't excuse her actions here, and that doesn't excuse what she did, and she definitely owes you an apology. I think this is a complicated situation, OP. I think you have a lot of complicated feelings around this, and I think that you have a lot of baggage from your childhood. I also think that your wife probably chose her words very, very poorly, especially with the genuine thing. I think that was probably what got you more than anything here. You felt like she was saying that your experience as a child when you were raising your sister uh, as your own daughter was not the genuine adult experience, was not genuinely you being in a, a uh, parent to her. And you feel very different about that. And I think that her using the word wasted here probably also may, if we can be generous with her terminology, was more like she's sorry that you had to basically spend years of your life not having a regular childhood. And that she considers that your childhood that you might have missed out on was wasted. At least if we want to give her the benefit of the doubt. It seems like you folks have communication issues here. And she and you should have had these kinds of conversations a long time ago before she got pregnant. And I think that's really where the issue in lies here is that you two have not communicated before this point about what your expectations are and what your how you feel about raising your daughter. And I think that is going to cause some friction in the future because of your lack of communication. So my advice here is that you should seek couples counseling and try to work out your problems in a safe, you know, comfortable environment. That way you can reduce the amount of miscommunications. I don't know that she was meaning to be hurtful here, but it came across clearly as hurtful to you. And I think she does owe an apology to you for at least that. So anyhow, take care and good luck. No jerks here. I get why you're angry. So if you can be calm about this, I can help you get where your wife was coming from. Your wife sees your childhood as an important and necessary aspect of human growth and development. She feels like you were robbed of a normal childhood because you had to take responsibility for your sister at such a young age. Not only that, 
but you had to do it because your father did not do what he needed to do in order to recover from your mother's death so that he could continue being a father and raise only the parts of his love that were still alive. That's what she meant by wasted. She's not saying that your efforts were not worth the result or that your sister was not worth the loss of your childhood. She does have some unwarranted pity for you and that's where she felt to need to comfort you. You do not need pity. You don't want pity. You can tell her that kindly. And OP replies, here's my problem with this. Every time I talk about this with someone, they instantly start a pity fest. And when I tell them that I do not care about the teenage life that I missed, because for me, I really loved raising my sister, they think that I'm faking it. I thought my wife would understand this, but here we go. Even my wife started the pity party. People still talk with me from the perspective that I consider her my sister. She's my daughter. Imagine telling your father that you wasted years of raising your daughter. It's the same for me. But she talked about the genuine thing when talking about their new baby as if the daughter didn't count. I'd be mad too. It's not just, oh, you couldn't be a teenager. It's now you're having a real kid and you can be a real dad, implying that this baby invalidates his previous relationship. It's just weird. And yes, parentification is terrible, but here we are, she's his kid and they have a father-daughter relationship. That was really a garbage thing for your wife to say. And as someone who's been pregnant, hormones are not an excuse. Clearly, she genuinely felt this way for a while. Kudos to you for what you did. I'm sorry your dad checked out, not the jerk. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverage of choice. Let me know what you're drinking here today, whether it's Diet Coke, uh, the pancake chocolate chip coffee, or uh, tea, or water, or golden eagles, or all that stuff. Just let me know. Thank you. Amber is drinking mint tea, and I'll let you guess what I'm drinking while I go hunt down a joke from uh, Mary. Her joke... <laughs> the joke that she shared with me. What do you get when you spill your tea down a rabbit hole? Hot crossed bunnies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's a great joke. Thank you, Mary, so much for that joke. I really appreciate it. I laughed at it when I saw it today. It, I, it was great. And the tea that I have today, as you can see, I changed the top one. It probably gave it away, but I have Earl Grey. All right, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for screenshotting messages guys sent me and sending them to their mothers? So for a content warning, this one does involve bullying and harassment. I am an 18-year-old girl who is in college at the moment, and I've been getting bullied and harassed by three guys in my class who have taken to messaging me online with rather gross and harassing messages and not safe for work pictures that I'm sure you can all fill in the gaps without me going into details. I should have reported them or just blocked them, but I had enough, so I screenshot every message that they sent me and found their mothers through Facebook pages and sent the screenshots to them, including an explanation of who I am and how their sons have been bothering me. Their mothers were horrified and shocked by what I sent them, explaining what was going on, and all three are on my side. Some of my friends think that this is genius and exactly what they deserve, but some of my other friends think that I went too far and it was out of line to put that on their mothers and also how I don't know what their home life is like. Am I the jerk for doing this? Should I have gone about it a different way? Edit due to questions and comments. When it started, it was just standard bullying. I reported them, but they only got a warning. The messages slash pictures started after that to prove as though I couldn't do anything to them. I figured reporting them again wouldn't work, so I did this. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. So, OP, I think that this was a appropriate way to handle this situation. I honestly don't think that you went overboard by messaging their mothers. And I think that hopefully their mothers talk to them and explain to them, <laughs> though they should know this already, why what they're doing is wrong. It's pretty terrible for them to send you pictures unwanted and to message you and harass you. That's not appropriate. I, I don't know. They kind of made their own bed here. Like they're doing bad things to you. They're bullying and harassing you. And so you you told their mommy on them and now hopefully their mothers are able to react. Now, as for what their home life is like, 
I do understand that some people may have a rough home life, but they're not living at home anymore. They're adults and they have the choice and option to not go back to home. They need to figure out themselves and they need to figure out their lives and this is not a healthy way of approaching relationships and it's not a good thing to do to somebody to bully and harass them and send them unwanted pictures. So yeah, I don't think you're a jerk. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, the people saying that you took it too far are the same ones who would defend these guys' behavior as just guys being guys. What they were doing is organized sexual harassment and it needs to be forwarded to the school administration as well. These people are abusers in their larval stage. Exactly this, anyone who defends your harassers are essentially saying that you deserve it, not the jerk. The absolute only argument I can see against doing this is forwarding unwanted uh, pics and putting the responsibility on the women, I say censor the pictures and include the fathers in the messages so they know they're responsible for raising their sons right. If they're boys being boys, their parents need to know what they're up to so they can raise men who will be men. Not the jerk, each of these guys could potentially be charged criminally. Instead, you told their mothers, I applaud you for employing a method that will ensure that they have some kind of punishment from their families. To be clear, it may not be any more effective overall than reporting to the police, but it's worth a shot. As for your friends who say that you took it too far, I'd ask them how far they think the three guys have gone and whether that's too far. Then tell those friends to F off. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. And if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.